Hi, Dr. Pal. Good morning. Hello. Can you hear me? Great. Good to see you. Good. Good. I could see a sense of relief on your face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always on the reels. So nice to see you on Zoom. <laughs> Nice, so that's nice, nice, closest to reality probably so good to see nice. you dr pal we'll start off in a minute so we aren't um, starting yet we have a minute to go so we're just waiting for everyone to settle down we've got some attendees and people are already raising hands guys please calm down we will give you time to ask your questions background looks like i'm swimming in an ocean <laughs> that, that's the gut bacteria. <laughs> Everybody who's attending this webinar should go for swimming after. That's the hidden uh, message. Shalana, anything? All good? Yeah, all good from my side. Great. Hi, Dr. Paul. Welcome. Welcome to Start Health Slides, Sector Health. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi, thank Dr. You Paul. Much. This is Ashni. I'm from Star Health, and welcome to our webinar. Thank you, Ashni. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. So excited to be here. We're excited as well. Thanks. Uh, a lot. We've got a lot of people raising hands, guys. You'll get your time. So please wait. Uh, it is 9:30, so we will start off in just a couple of seconds. Okay. Um, I think we will start off now. It's 9.31. We are going to start off with uh, a very, very warm good morning and welcome to everyone who's here. We're thrilled to welcome you to this webinar on Nutrition 101, which is Busting Myths About Diet and Intermittent Fasting, presented by Star Health Insurance in collaboration with Secura Health. I am Dr. Diana Henry Selvraj, Clinical Lead at Secura Health. And if you are a regular at our monthly webinars, you would be familiar with me. So today we have a very, very special guest with us. I'm sure we all are familiar with him and his viral videos. We are joined by the incredibly knowledgeable and fun Dr. Pal Manikam. Together, we will be diving into the world of nutrition myths and setting the record straight. So let's jump in. Before we be begin the webinar, let me give you a few lines that are trending. I've lost 21 kgs without going to the gym. These foods are killing you. List of vegetables that are actually harmful to your health. My intermittent fasting results blew me away. Do they sound familiar? These are all the most trending headlines of the weight loss platforms you can find on the, inter on the internet, especially from influencers. But have you ever thought of how much of this can be true? We are going to explore that today. Even though Mr. Arogya Sami, Mr. Saravna Kumar and Mrs. Tirpura Sundari are enough to introduce our celebrity medcom doctor, I, Diana, will do the honors today. Dr. Palani Appan Manikum completed his MBBS at the prestigious PhD Medical College, Coimbatore. He then did his Master's in Public Health in Boston. Following this, he completed his MD General Medicine at Wayne State University, Detroit. He further specialized in gastroenterology and nutrition. He lives with his wife Priya and two kids, Arjun and Adarva, and is practicing in Sacramento, California. He is definitely not an ABCD, American-born confused Desi, as he mentioned mm -hmm. in one of his reels. He is mm -hmm. rather an EFGH, an expert focused on gut health. Dr. Pal is well is a well-known internet sensation and the sheer number of people who are attending this webinar today is a great testament of Dr. Pal's reach. The excitement is truly palpable. Before starting off with our webinar, we will move on to an informative quiz session. Audience can type in their answers in the chat box. So the first question, which fruit is high in potassium? If you've been watching Dr. Pal's reels, I think you would be a pro at this by now. You would get all the answers correct. People, I think a lot of you have started putting in your answers in the chat box. Wow, we have a true follower. Someone is saying red banana, which is not even in the list. So great. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we've got a lot of right answers. So I'm just moving on to the answer, which is banana. A lot of you have got it right. 
banana is high in potassium and it aids to regulate your blood pressure by increasing the excretion of sodium from the body it's also good for cardiac health but avoid having it in an empty stomach a banana a day might keep bp away moving on to our next question what is our body's energy source during fasting is it vitamin fat enzyme or carbohydrate we've already got a lot of answers right answers but people just be beware of a wrong answer you don't want to be the main character in dr pal's next viral reel mm-hmm. imagine dr pal going my follower yasmin thinks vitamin is going to give her energy during <laughs> ramzan fasting i hope she does not also think metformin will give her high hemoglobin mm-hmm. just kidding we will go to the right answer now i think a lot of you have got this right The right answer is fat. During fasting, fats are used as an energy source once the glycogen reserve is over. Moving on to our third question, which food contains carbohydrates? Is it cereals and pulses, popcorn, milk or all of the above? Even before I finish the question, we've got a lot of people answering. I'm taking that as a very very nice sign and we've got repeated right answers from the same people. So well done all of you. I think I'm going to the answer now. The answer is all of the above. Most of you got this right. Carbohydrate is the prime nutrient found in most food items. And after all, pal or milk or dood is also containing carbohydrate. My next reel is on popcorn. What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> We read your mind, Dr. Pal. <laughs> Okay so moving on to our last and final question what is the ideal time range for intermittent fasting is it 24 hours 24 to 32 hours 12 to 16 hours or 13 to 12 uh, 20 hours so people are not even waiting for me to read the question you are already got getting the right answer so well done i'm just going to move on to the answer you guys are right it's 12 to 16 hours in 12 hours your body clock shifts to fasting mode for everyone who answered all the questions correctly you've got the first prize so now you can go and make yourself a buttermilk your gut health will also get first prize <laughs> We will now move on to the webinar questions but before that I think a lot of the audience have questions you've been raising your hands already I appreciate the enthusiasm I request all of you to uh, type out your questions on the Q&A box or in the chat box and we will take up as many questions as possible at the end of the webinar So now moving on we have our webinar questions so dr pal are we ready to go yes yes thank you for the opportunity and uh, looks like you have researched the reels completely that i myself forgot the script <laughs> <laughs> great dr pal <laughs> i'm going to use that easy um, efgh in my next show <laughs> i'm going to say thanks to diana <laughs> <That looks> <laughs> most welcome doctor most welcome <laughs> We are diving into the webinar questions now. We're going to keep this as uh, quick as possible because our audience have already started asking questions. So I don't want to disappoint anyone. I'm going to try and uh, get uh, you to answer most of our audience's questions as well. So our first question. So before I start with the question, I've tried the eight-hour fasting interval, doctor, and I call it breakfast. it's usually idli pongal alu paratha and all of that i think it has helped me tons by adding a ton of weight so now my question is how do we find the right type of fasting or fasting interval for our body um so i think the uh, uh, main takeaway from this webinar is that i think like 138 participants are there which is a wonderful turnout thank you thank you so much um you throughout the interval throughout the webinar i just wanted to emphasize one point that um nothing is going to be like set in uh, stone okay so it has to be individualized to particular patient uh, but i'm going to give you a generalized idea regarding how you can adopt this in your lifestyle um so that you can take at least one or two tips from this webinar and then adopt in the lifestyle right away so that's the main goal so um which brings to the answer to this question right type of fasting interval is what i promote and what i have been involved in clinical research is 
is a type of intermittent fasting i intermittent fasting is uh, very very popular these days um but uh, i don't focus on very strict fasting uh, i always uh, believe that you know if the method is not sustainable um then the results will not be following so whatever you are doing it has to be enjoyable um so the first thing that we usually tell my patients whenever they come for weight loss is that we say that uh first thing is we need to stop eating after uh, sunset and uh, you know sunset you know 6 pm 7 pm happens in many places sometimes it can even happen 8 or 9 pm during summer so in your environment in your individual situation it might be difficult to eat dinner around 6 or 7 pm so we okay we, in that case scenario we say that you know you start with like 8 pm or even 8:30 um but the problem is most of the young people between 25 to 35 they start their day at 10 pm because they work in night shifts corresponds to the us uh, uh, you know the technology culture um so that is the main thing i'm trying to change here so if you want to start something the first thing you need to focus is on the dinner time um so cut down on the dinner time first and then calculate 12 hours backwards So, for example, you uh, choose 8:30 p.m. Right? Let's say that's what is uh, applicable to your family, your environment. Then, 12 hours backwards would be 8:30 a.m. in the morning. So, 12-hour fasting interval is very, very doable. Um, and all you need to do is to just to change your mindset a little bit, and then be a little bit conscious of where, what you're eating, and when you're eating. uh after this 12 hour interval and that is very very possible for everybody so this we call as time restricted feeding and that's slightly different from intermittent fasting because fasting gives this connotation that there is something like negative going on so we change that to eating we say eating but you should not eat <laughs> so that is the cause <laughs> <laughs> so so time restricted uh, eating okay so time restricted eating is only when the sun comes up you start eating and when sun goes down you stop eating so you start with that that is your first fasting interval this is applicable to everybody more than 12 years of age men women male female both are same but uh, <laughs> in the <laughs> young kids more than 12 years of age all kinds of professionals everybody can be easily applicable the next step is to see how your body is reacting to this 12 hour interval and then you advance further if your body allows to so it is basically uh, it's a trial and uh, error method great so the take away from that dr pal i think you've explained it beautifully so we can eat but we cannot eat and when the sun sets even if you go to sleep or not the gut bacteria is going to sleep so stop eating so right. by right. by 8:30 that's your uh, time limit guys so keep that in mind thank you so much doctor we are moving on to our next question of the day how do fasting and diet impact pcos patients since it is a known fact that symptoms of pcos are controllable with diet and physical activity correct um, you know pcos is not a disease uh, pcos okay. is a as a metabolic condition it is be because we have damaged our system so much that your body doesn't know what else to do so it is giving you all this problems and telling that you know please save me please save me and uh, please change something what you are doing so that you can uh, save me right but what we are doing is we are trying to uh, save that by adding medications in the body and which is even worsening the situation it's a vicious cycle and you never get mm-hmm. out of it So PCOS is number one. It's not a disease. It is a metabolic condition where it is a result of whatever damage that you have done to your body over the past few years. So the main reason that PCOS happens is that you know I feel really uh, bad for females. Uh, it is not a misogynistic statement. It is just that they have to balance more hormones than men. Mm-hmm. and uh, you know if somebody has to claim for gender equality this is the category that really women has to claim for gender equality <laughs> because uh, at least for men we only have you know testosterone growth mm-hmm. hormone it is you know relatively easier to balance but for women it is absolutely important that you play to this musical orchestra that god has given to you in terms of how the hormones are secreted and how the hormones are being uh, taking rest and when are they active but the problem is our indian culture our indian society has been trained in such a way that men sleep throughout the night very well 
<laughs> and the women always have some kind of issues uh, to take care of either they take care of the family take care of the kids take care of work and throughout the day as well they are so busy in terms of in you know, controlling this work life balance so uh, to start with women uh, fortunately or unfortunately in our, our society they always start with a negative or drawback so i saw i say uh, an example that they start their innings with one inning one wicket down so they have to hit a sixer or they have to play like pujara to uh, you know hit a 100 uh, like a playing a test match you cannot be like rishabh pant and then come like hit six one or two balls and then third ball is out you know you cannot do that right this should be a long and sustainable thing to mm-hmm. fine tune your hormonal balance in such a way that it doesn't get um it doesn't get uh, confused to regarding mm-hmm. which way to follow so bottom line is every cell of our body has a sleep wake cycle similar to how mm-hmm. we go to sleep and how we wake up in the morning every cell in your body goes to sleep wakes up in the morning and each cell is controlled by multiple hormones and believe it or not god has created in such a way that there is a wake up cycle for each and every hormone as well mm-hmm. so for pcos the problem is estrogen progesterone is not talking to the all the other hormones together they have a family fight which we need to settle down mm-hmm. and this to to settle down the family fight we need to listen to how our body was born initially so mm-hmm. when we were born all the hormones gets active as soon as the sun rises and all the hormones goes to bed as soon as the sun sets most of the hormones and there is a particular set of hormones that gets active after sunset so that they will repair all the damage that you did in the morning so that you are all set for the next day this is what we call a circadian rhythm and believe it or not we are, this is how uh, we have been evolved in our ancestors as well so remember um, diana when when our ancestors mm-hmm. were you know, hunting right so mm-hmm. they didn't have this like fancy led lights they didn't have right. this fancy uh, stuff to eat in dinner so they have to hunt in the morning and they have okay. to eat it before sun sunset right mm-hmm. so and then they used to fast for three or four days even five days together because one in 24 hunting episodes they will be successful the remaining 23 or in vain so okay. our body has been tuned to this fasting because to fine tune the circadian rhythm so for pc over patients it is absolutely important that you trust your circadian rhythm and you follow your eating habits and also your sleeping habits along the circadian rhythm i can't tell you how many patients i have treated with pcos because most of these patients are fatty liver and they come to me for treatment i can't tell you how important it is to sleep at like 8 pm 9 pm wake up at like 5 am 6 am as soon as the sun rises eat one hour after the after when you wake up and then shut down your uh, uh, dining table Uh, lights <laughs> dining table and also the lights nice. at 7 pm and then 3 hours later you go to sleep so if you follow the cycle regularly and i have seen people reverse pcos it's going to take some time it's not going to be easy it's going to take some time uh, but you are respecting your body and your body will respect you so i always say that pcos can be easily controlled with lifestyle changes similar to respecting your circadian rhythm it will take time it will take patience and you need to follow my channel great <laughs> take aways please follow dr pal manikam <laughs> on all <laughs> social media platforms possible second thing pcos is an sos by the body hormones so Correct. take care of your circadian rhythm Correct. have i got it right dr pal yes absolutely i think you should start your own new channel <laughs> <laughs> As of now I'm just an apprentice so <laughs> learning <laughs> Moving on to our next question Okay what are some of the diet tips for the busy population to achieve their nutrition goal and also catch their train <laughs> Both are impossible that it can happen together <laughs> <laughs> So um so when I was pretty big right, I used to weigh like 100 kilos before to a point that I jump into the swimming pool all the water will come out so it is how big I was at that time so you know being a doctor myself I didn't realize how unhealthy I was the reason is we don't get taught about nutrition during a medical school we always mm-hmm. talk about 
uh, how to prevent uh, how to treat the disease and if we have the state of the art stents to place in the heart but we don't focus to prevent the heart attack to start with so uh, nutrition has not been our main goal in medical curriculum so when that happened to me um, then i realized that okay no the whole system is rigged we need to uh, look back and then see what actually to be done the one thing i really thought that really helped me was i tried to follow the circadian rhythm which help, helped me okay. and during this eating window which i call eating window right um so for example you start eating in the morning let's say around 8 am and then you stop eating by 8 pm so 8 am to 8 pm will be your eating window in this 12 hours the most important thing that you should worry about is protein and the cells that i we talk about when where the hormones needs to talk to each other so that you maintain like a good musical orchestra they need protein to work and all the protein requirement is 0.8 to 1 g per kilogram for everybody so let's say you weigh like 60 kilos so you need at least uh, 60 grams of uh, protein or 48 to 60 grams of protein minimum i'm not talking about bodybuilding i'm not talking about anything just for regular maintenance you need that much amount of protein so what happens is when you eat protein it will keep you full and all the other fats and carbs macros will come down on its own so when i did this method i really didn't know what protein was what uh, how much protein was in each and every ingredient so i started learning i started reading food labels i started googling i, I started using this app called my fitness pal Uh, by the way it is not my app <laughs> so it is a free app i'm not promoting <laughs> um so what i used to similar to catching the train i also you know when i go to work in the morning mm-hmm. at 7 am i always have some kind of a protein snack that i uh, prepare the day before uh, and i will be very very conscious of that so because the reason is when you are hungry and you don't take care of it at that time you will end up eating more than what was required so this pre planning actually helped me a lot and uh, if you are a vegetarian you need to you need to be a little bit even more uh, conscious more organized in terms of how you are pre planning the day because vegetarian source of protein are very difficult to obtain and if you don't pre plan uh, because all the non vegetarian sources are very very rich in protein so it's relatively easier so once you start doing this cycle you will start loving the changes and that's going to take some time it's going to take like 2 to 3 months and once you start realizing that this is giving you lots of energy and you are sleeping well it is not about weight loss at all in this method weight loss doesn't happen right away weight loss is a by product of whatever has uh, whatever you are doing to your body So when you are aligning all this hormonal rhythm to you and now also making sure the protein content is high your body will have to change it is choosing the path of least resistance now because it doesn't want to change and it will give you all sorts of problems it will make you crave midnight for biryani and you you want you want to eat uh, um, you want to drink that milkshake right in front of you at 8 pm and then all the other people when you are trying to fast fast that's way they will be eating kfc burger Mm-hmm. Okay, so all your environment will be so difficult to change, and it will be very difficult for you to change as well. So all I focus was only one thing at a time. Okay, so first I'll focus on the eating window. Okay, once I figure that out, it'll take time because it'll take time because yeah. it's become a habit. Then in your busy schedule, like catching the train, like on your uh, busy uh, professional work, I make sure that my protein intake is there for per day. So once you do these two steps. you will start noticing some good benefits and good changes in your body then you will get addicted to it and uh, you need to wait until that uh, bug hits you great i think uh, amazing answer doctor three p's to remember in addition to the fourth the uh, p that is palmanicum so mm-hmm. three p's protein prepare your meals and allow your body to play the music so yes <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that down uh, and then i think uh, someone someone quoted the hardest part of a diet isn't watching what you eat it is watching others eat so Correct. like you mentioned <laughs> the biryani and kfc right so i think it's more of you know looking at people eating it and then you want to eat it as well so <laughs> thank you doctor for answering that question so beautifully Hopefully, we are moving on to our next question. If a person never skips meals, is that considered healthy? Um, so, in, to be honest, we don't need that much food 
okay <laughs> we don't need that much food at all but food is everywhere you know i do a video on intermittent fasting uh and uh, swiggy ad comes in between oh. <laughs> in youtube so yeah, uh, the marketing team of swiggy needs uh, a real <laughs> hype so food is everywhere you just think about okay i want this vada and then that's it it is delivered in two two vada is delivered in two minutes into a uh, right right on your door doorstep so the food is everywhere and we know that we are emotionally connected to food we are emotionally connected to food and then all these food industries have tapped into that emotions very well and uh, as an indi for indian community we just pour our love in the form of food no matter what we are depressed we eat when we are happy we eat and uh, we thought that drinking alcohol was a taboo but i think there will be a point where when you're eating so much will also be considered as a taboo uh, our body in general they don't need this much amount of calories especially given our current environment so if a person never skips meals they can say healthy it is based on what is your current situation is so let's say that mm-hmm. you were you know you do have some kind of belly fat then yes if you don't skip meal then it might not be uh, healthy because you don't need that much whenever there is a belly fat which means that your body has more than what is needed your body is thinking that okay you know this guy might be starving sometime later let me store this as belly fat for now and when this guy starves we will give this belly fat into calories but unfortunately this poor thing doesn't know that that situation will never happen <laughs> so um it is not a bad idea to skip meals because mm-hmm. if you have a, a belly fat but the make sure that you know your protein content is high and this is just one part of losing weight right so the reason that i'm promoting this is because it's a relatively easier method to adopt and the easier method to be sustainable the all the there are other methods as well you know um they say that you no know, low calorie diet you keep on eating small and frequent meals mm-hmm. you make sure that you low calorie uh, in that method you might have to eat things that you might not like you have to eat salad you have to eat vegetables or something what you don't like mm-hmm. so then that gives an another layer of trouble uh, where that is a test to your willpower okay. so what i promote is that you know i'm not against all the other kinds of uh, uh, weight loss methods This is a method that I think that it might be easily sustainable especially for busy professionals like most of you. So the yeah. answer to the question is answer <laughs> the question is yes if you have belly fat you uh, it is better to skip meal if you are relatively healthy if you have if your body fat is much less and if you are muscular you necessarily don't even have to skip meal because your muscles will be hungry and will start eating all those meals. the belly fat part i'm sure most of us do have it so yes we will take up the former uh, suggestions see, see that's why yes. that's why when you take a picture right everybody stands straight especially indian men they don't stand on the side at all because our secret will be revealed <laughs> <laughs> and the small frequent meals part i uh, i had it just reminds me of a small uh, joke within uh, my organization so my nutritionist colleague uh, nitya she advised her client mr babu to have small frequent meals so now he has pre breakfast breakfast post breakfast pre lunch lunch post lunch and now it's almost nine meals a day that he's having nitya has finally quit her job she can't do this anymore <laughs> call the uh, intermittent eating intermittent eating correct <laughs> Okay so moving on to our next question i see a lot of participants have been asking questions so if anyone has any question you're free to post your questions on the chat box or on the q and a box and we will try and take up as many questions as possible at the end of this webinar moving on so how far does home cooked food contribute to our health dr pal and does this include ordering biryani on swiggy and cooking right at home <laughs> Andre and I'm making hot water. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um it is a, it is a, we are I'm very very concerned about this young people between 25 to 30 years of age. I'm very very concerned because nothing will happen right now in terms of their lifestyle. But what will happen is when they become 35 to 40 and uh, it then all this changes or whatever they have done to their body will reflect because it takes 10 years 
uh for the effect to happen and it is this not eating at home and then eating outside repeatedly what happens is that you know our bodies is smart right our body is smart our gut has like more than a million trillion bacteria and our gut bacteria changes evolves over a span of few years and it is basically like a small plant that you are raising uh, in your own own body and it is exactly it will grow based on what water and minerals and what kind of fertilizers that you are pouring in hmm. so for example so let's say that a guy doesn't eat outside at all or ever okay and then he just sits inside a small 2 by 2 room 6 by 6 room and then put under a youtube channel and then calls himself dr pal okay <laughs> 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 for 40 year uh, for th- you know for 30 40 years you you keep on eating home cooked food your gut bacteria will realize that okay this is something that is nice and i like it so your body will your brain actually your brain will stimulate your intestine because of this brain gut connection and will promote all good gut bacteria okay it is a compounding effect okay so when you start eating outside more frequently the same compounding effect happens as well so your body is smart your body thinks that okay this guy likes outside food compared to home cooked food so when you eat outside food all the bad bacteria start slowly increasing and that's why i said it takes like 5 to 10 years when good bacteria is more than bad bacteria the brain gut axis is reversed which means that your gut controls the brain Okay. okay your gut controls the brain for example um you know there is a study that we are doing where vegetarian people are considered to be having more less depression compared to non vegetarian food okay why uh, the reason for that was we took the fecal samples and then we analyzed the bacteria the number of good gut bacteria was significantly higher in patients who are vegetarian and who eat mainly at home and the same thing on the other side if you have bad gut bacteria there is increased risk of depression anxiety weight gain a lot of belly fat in this group and the reason is this brain gut axis is not working so bad bacteria rules the brain and it wants more sugar so if you're craving for laddu if you're craving for sweets if you're craving for something the problem is not you the problem is your bad bacteria and the bad bacteria you have actually grown and you developed over the past few years and uh, that is it's not going to change overnight you might have to revisit whatever you are putting inside your mouth slowly so that you can recreate a new environment for those bacteria to grow so this is a huge research that's going on 10 years from now everybody will have an individualized gut bacteria profile so instead of uh, um, uh, instead of uh, marrying based on astrology you should marry based on gut bacteria <laughs> and the website the marriage website will be guts.com and the, the tag <laughs> the tag line will be marry me if you have guts <laughs> <laughs> no i'm not crazy it's a big thing it's a big thing mm. it's a big thing because this gut bacteria gets transmitted to people for five generations So let's say you have good gut bacteria then you are providing your next generation with a good gut bacteria to start with and uh, I'll take some more time on this topic mm-hmm. so for example so we analyze the gut bacteria for newborn babies okay so in newborn babies when they were born through normal vaginal canal delivery the good gut bacteria was so high but when they were delivered through c section there was more bad bacteria oh. and the reason is that when they were traveling the vaginal canal they swallow the bacteria in the vaginal canal and that creates a very good template for them to grow good bacteria because the compounding effect starts slow mm-hmm. so there is a there is a research that says that you know even autism could be linked to patients who born in cesarean section uh not like proven but the problem mm-hmm. the but the analysis is that because these guys have like less good gut bacteria that could be related to this brain gut axis somehow mm-hmm. so okay. we just don't know how true it is but there is some kind of research that is coming up and i can guarantee you that 10 years from now it is going to be a huge huge uh, uh factor to consider in any kind of disease that you take it so 
how far does home cook contribute to our health significantly more than 100% great i think uh, dr pal that was so clear crystal clear and from now on i think tinder people on tinder are going to be like uh, how were you attracted is it because of a good butt no it's because of a great butt <laughs> no not a great butt great gut great <laughs> gut <laughs> yeah and i think we have a few jokes on the chat as well i'll read that out later <laughs> yes so moving on to our next question of the day dr pal uh, what are the necessary precautions that we need to be uh, following while undergoing intermittent fasting or taking it up the so first you are pregnant if you are pregnant you shouldn't do it so it's a, it's a big thing mm-hmm. okay if you are pregnant you shouldn't do it and then kids less than 12 years of age they might not be you know modulated enough to follow this okay um, and then if you have like severe heart disease kidney disease if you have to balance your electrolytes and water intake this will this will not be applicable but in general i can tell you all the ones i'm to be participants here in this uh, zoom that belong to less than 0.0001% of the population and mm-hmm. that is not you and i can clearly tell you right now <laughs> so anybody can follow time restricted feeding so this intermittent fasting and time restricted feeding is different in one way that you could do this 8 hours of fasting what i'm talking about or 16 hours of fasting um from you know let's say you start eating at 4 pm and then you start go all the way up to like 12 Uh, midnight that is also considered intermittent fasting right but the outcome is blunted because you're not following the circadian mm-hmm. rhythm so instead of doing 4 to 12 which is close to like uh, how much say 8 hours of eating you could pre you could make that a little bit earlier and then if you even do like 12 to 8 the outcome will be like doubled and uh, yeah. that's why we don't say intermittent fasting we say time restricted feeding because it has to be revolving around the time of the sunrise and sunset great thank you doctor we are moving on to our next question does intermittent fasting interval differ between men and women so basically can sarana kumar and tirpura sundari follow the similar <laughs> if interval <laughs> that's why they both don't follow <laughs> they don't have any partiality at all they both don't follow <laughs> so uh for for uh, women um mm. as i said men it's very easy to do and if they just do this most of the problems will be gone uh mm. but for women you need to be a little bit more careful especially when you're trying to revisit this uh, hormonal cycles um, in general when you're uh, in your menstrual cycle five days before the menstrual cycle where your progesterone phase is at maximum and progesterone kicks in at that time and progesterone loves carbs you need to give carbs you need to give sugar for progesterone to uh, work and that is why you are craving for that lace chips that is why you are craving for that sweets in that last 5 days before your menstrual cycle it is okay. not that you don't want to do anything and then your body is designed to take rest at that time as well Okay mm-hmm. my wife makes that advantage and then ask for ice cream every day that's a different story <laughs> <laughs> that's every woman out there <laughs> <laughs> but you need to be a little bit more careful so that's why we say for women when you start this you need to listen to your body you need to listen okay. to your body right so you it, it, it is just a game that you play okay so you know after menstruation when the, when the after menstruation when the menstrual cycle starts your estrogen is slowly starting to release and it will peak around like 10 12 to 14 days and in those first two weeks you were awesome you could even do like four hour eating six hour eating your body will be able to handle it. but if you do the same four hour six hour eating towards the five days of the menstrual cycle prior to that then you will be in a problem and okay. this doesn't happen to everybody and that is why i keep telling my patients is that this is not a mass this is not a rajinikan mass movie it has to be like individualized <laughs> like uh, uh you know that nolan movie it has to be that you have we have to understand this you mm-hmm. have to understand your body and then you need to re- choose the fasting interval especially for women great i think that was another amazing answer so uh guys you can be like rajinikan mass but if girls you have to be like christopher nolan <laughs> Thank you doctor moving on to our next question what is mindful eating and how does screen time affect our eating pattern um so two things i usually say is mindful eating is 
um, when you start doing this, when you start recognizing what is happening, is that you will you will start cutting down slowly and start cutting down slowly. And then one thing I always tell my patients is that hey, you know, when you're doing this. I really don't focus too much on what they eat during their eating window initially because until mm. they figure out a timeline for them, until this becomes a habit, we really don't focus too much on that. And okay. uh, once you finalize your eating window, then your mindful eating comes in terms of I told talked about the protein, and then you will also figure about the carbohydrates because in this method, while we are talking about it, we are focusing on insulin. So insulin sleeps after sunset. and if you are waking okay. up your insulin whenever you eat something even if you taste something your body is so smart that it will be able to figure out that micrograms of sugar in that tasting that your insulin will be up okay because that's how law your insulin is like your katappa in <laughs> baubali movie if you have seen that it will do everything for you it will do everything for you okay but if you keep abusing it it will also kill you <laughs> and that is what the starting because you know it doesn't know oh, if you wake up in the night middle of the night it doesn't know whether it is you or it is a villain it might it mm. might it might be confused so when you're waking in the middle of the night your body insulin what happens is that for the first like 5 years 10 years no problem at all you know it will start working for you and after 10 years it will say that you know this guy doesn't have any work he keeps on waking me up I am done with this guy. Let's see what he does, and then it will it will wake up, but will not do the job. So then, all these extra calories, we don't know what to do, and then it gets stored in the belly fat. So that is the okay. first starting of the thing. So what I tell my patients is that okay, no, once you figure out this eating window, your insulin will be happy because your insulin is sleeping overnight, right? So once you figure out the eating window, the next time the insulin might be happy is when you decrease your carbohydrate intake. So when I say decrease your carbohydrate intake, you don't have to go like really keto or something like that with no carb, low carb, nothing. All I'm asking for is mindful eating in terms okay. of how much carbohydrate that you are taking in a day. So basically, I give this exercise to all my patients: is that one day for one day, you document everything that you are eating and then calculate the number of carbohydrate that is there in each and every ingredient that you are taking. For example, dosa. Dosa has like 15 grams of carbs. Italy, Italy has 7 grams of carbs. You don't have to cut down anything. You just eat mm-hmm. normally, just document it, and then you'll be surprised in terms of how much amount of carbs that you will be handling per day. In general, insulin will be able to handle 150 grams of carbs per day. When you say keto, they're talking about less than 20 grams, and uh, that is something that is you know not many people can do. So if you're around like 150 grams or something like that, that is called. We I don't call it as a low carb diet. We call it as normal carb diet. Okay. So I was explaining low carb diet to my friend Sarvana Kumar. He was sitting on the <laughs> dining table. He took the plate and then he went down and sat on the floor and he said, "This is low carb diet." Look. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to be a really, really normal carb diet. I'm not even asking you mm-hmm. to go low. Just normal. Okay. Normal. So when you do this, you'll be very mindful. You'll be surprised that an average Indian diet, especially a South Indian diet, have two fifty to three hundred grams of carbs per day, mm. without even adding anything extra. No sweets, no milkshake, no jeera, nothing. So while you start doing this, then you will realize that okay, you know you are eating too much of carbs. So maybe we'll cut down a little bit, so that next time when you go for the gulab jamun, you will not go for the second gulab jamun, right? So you will support this campaign that divorce the gulab jamun couple. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> so that is mindful eating. So that your mindful sure. eating will come will come slowly in terms of what you are putting in your mouth. Screen time more than your eating. Yes, absolutely. You know, you should focus on your food. Focus on what you're eating. Obs all helps. but i'm going to be honest with you in this busy lifestyle it is very very difficult to do that and everybody starts looking at your whatsapp messages instagram messages everybody keeps on eating like this only right including me mm-hmm. because we just don't have time we just try to catch up on everything okay. so if you can stop it it's better but if you cannot stop it the other thing that is easy to stop is to stop your screen time before going to bed that is something that we could easily do so these two 
uh, timing is very very critical and at, uh, the the sleeping time is even more critical than using screens during eating okay. so it is absolutely important i cannot emphasize this any more uh, it is absolutely critical that you put your phones down 30 minutes at least before you go to bed if not the whole thing that i'm talking about the circadian rhythm so all your hormones okay. are going to sleep right and the, there is melatonin hormone that comes in makes all the other hormones to go to sleep and melatonin is actually singing something called talat which means you know let <laughs> be to all the hot all of a sudden you see the light from the phone your melatonin is confused do oh, you know this guy is going to do something very productive so let's every hormone wake up mm. and then 2 seconds later you say good night and then you put the phone down and your hormones are confused what is this guy doing this guy is going to be active this guy is going to sleep oh my god i can't believe that this guy is doing this okay okay all students go to sleep <laughs> right <laughs> so you keep on repeating it's uh, on and off and uh, especially when people wake up in the middle of the night to look at the time what do they do they look at the phone so one ray of blue light that emits from the phone can delay the melatonin secretion by hour and a half so if you look at your phone at 1:30 a.m then the next time that you're going to sleep is only at like 3 a.m mm. um because your melatonin will go down there will be a small dip and then it will come up back again so it's all fascinating but the problem is all this small small thing that i'm talking about it will not hit you right away it is yeah. it is it is like your mutual fund it slowly grows and then it will hit you hard 10 years after i wish it was like you no know, very active growth stocks like tesla mm. or something like that you know it drops <laughs> down it slaps you on your face oh, that's it you made a mistake <laughs> <laughs> so that is why you know we keep promoting this on social media generating awareness that you know small small things will make a big difference eventually thank you doctor so only if you do worse the gulab jamun your bahubali will be happy correct <laughs> correct correct support, support the campaign <laughs> support the campaign <laughs> correct so moving on to our next question how often should we check our weight but doctor i don't want the answer to this question first <laughs> <laughs> so i yes. i i i tell people that um, you know especially when you are um, starting this method nothing will happen nothing will happen because this is a long term thing this is not a short term thing you know i did a first when i started this youtube channel i started to do the video of how to lose belly fat um only one person saw the video and liked it and that was me <laughs> but the same video which has how to lose belly fat in 7 days had hmm. 7 million views wow and the only way that they could have done is that if they hold the breath in seven times in seven days because it's going to come right back right so all the shortcut method will never work will never work unfortunately your your body is a rental space that your god has given you need to pay the rent if you don't pay the rent you might be evicted <laughs> sometimes <laughs> so when you are paying the when paying the rent means that you are following the good lifestyle which you are supposed to uh so when you are doing this all this weight loss will not happen right away it takes time mm-hmm. because once you reset the hormone back you are pulling it back right you are pulling it back what it's supposed to be and then when it does then all weight loss will become a by product so when i do this i tell my patients do not check your weight for 90 days okay and then i always tell my patient you should pack your weighing machine weighing scale and then just put it on the top of your uh, house so that nobody else will check it nobody should check the check it right if not what happens is you know like some people actually stand on the weighing scale look at the weight and they get depressed and then what yeah. happens is they uh, remove part by part they remove their watch they remove <laughs> their belt they remove their necklaces <laughs> <laughs> nothing goes down and i have seen people standing on one leg <laughs> As well. Oh, so yeah. So ninety days, three months. Ninety days. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, doctor. That was a very, very good advice. I'm going to throw my weight scale right away. <laughs> But why don't you follow this method? You don't follow the method, and you throw your weight scale, then you will end up in a weight scale on my office. <laughs> 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 Thank you doctor moving on to our next question 
what is the healthiest rate of weight loss so uh usually they say you know 0.5 uh, to 1 pound per 1 to 2 weeks so okay. yeah that that is the healthiest way and if you follow this method that's what will happen uh, where you the weight loss will be slow the reason where you have rapid weight loss is a problem is that you might have a tendency to form gallstones stones in your gall bladder okay. because your body will not be able to adapt such a rapid change and there will be rapid fat degradation fat metabolism that your body might not be able to handle and they will form all these stones in the gall bladder if you see uh i know i'm a gastroenterologist i feel i see patients with gallstones all the time and if you see most of the times pregnant people will have gallstones 2 years after so what will happen is you know they'll be you know they'll gain all this weight during pregnancy and then they'll be starting to lose pretty fast okay um so i know because of hormonal changes they will have gallstones the second thing that where we see gallstones is in weight loss surgeries when we do bariatric surgeries they will lose weight like crazy and within the 6 months to 12 months they will start having gallstone attack so that's why we say that healthiest rate of weight loss is the rate where you follow a slow and sustainable uh, method of weight loss sir doctor and if anyone's not seeing the right number on the scale please change the weighing scale correct <laughs> Mm. Yes moving on to our next question doctor how can we keep track of our diet intake without affecting our everyday schedule and so uh, you know some uh, you have to put that initial effort so it is mm. not easy it is definitely not easy you have to put that initial effort to understand what are the macros what is carbs what is protein what is fat how do you get this 0.8 to 1 gram per kilogram of protein per day um what is what is working for you how how are you doing on a high carb diet how are you doing on a low carb diet so it will take some time it will uh, take some time so one thing to keep track of your diet is as i said before making sure your protein content is good for the day all the other macros will fall in place that is one of the trick the second trick is that there are multiple apps available these days One of the app is called My Fitness Pal. There's another app is called Tweak and Eat. There's another app is called. It's a okay. it's a good app which we use in our US patients. It's available in India as well. It's called Tweak and Eat, where you just take a picture of the food, mm-hmm. and uh, that will classify your protein, carbs, and fats. It might be it might not be very accurate, but it'll give you an idea regarding hey, you know, this meal is good or not. So that is one way to do that as well. And the third thing is once you get um once you get knowledge about carbs proteins and fats then you it's a game that you will play okay in this dinner plate or in this lunch plate how much protein i'm having how much carb am i having um how much fiber i'm having what am i eating so when you start doing that you will slowly analyzing that okay you know you will start decreasing your junk foods and then you will start increasing your fiber rich foods and then remember the goal is to grow good get bacteria and that is going to take some time so sure, doctor so we'll move on to our next question i think we've got a lot of audience question we might have to skip a few questions and take up the audience question in a bit because we're running short of time so uh, we'll try and keep this as short as possible doctor i will maybe skip a few questions but moving on to our next question for now um before i go with the question i would like to give a little back story so my neighbor uncle pacheyappa drank pache tea which is basically green tea for 3 whole months to lose weight but from the fourth month onwards he mentioned that the only way to lose weight from green tea is if you pick the leaves from the mountain yourself so uncle is now in assam plucking some tea leaves so i want to know exactly if green tea affects weight loss and does it help um green tea helps in uh, uh weight loss um it, how do i put it so if i if i say that green tea doesn't help in weight loss and that's it you know there'll be a, a huge backlash so um green tea does help in weight loss provided you use green tea to extend your eating window okay okay so that will help but if you keep so green tea how people use is as if you know they're going to a church and asking for forgiveness from the father right so they eat mutton biryani chicken biryani they <laughs> eat gulab jamun laddu everything and then finally they say oppa i drink one green tea everything is done <laughs> <laughs> 
so that concept has to change green tea is not the panacea for everything so it i, I green tea yes it, it does have that catechinins and you know that helps a little bit but that is not the holy grail so similar to what you said uh, you know uh, you have to uh, um at least plucking a green tea leaves will actually shed you some calories and at least in that way you lose weight besides that it is very difficult <laughs> so uncle can still be in the sun for a while <laughs> correct correct you might not I'll come back and let him be <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so moving on to our next question i think i will close with this um and then we will take up the audience questions uh so my mother shanti actually doctor mentioned a few ba- uh, days back that from now on our diet will have spinach zyada and sugar kam i asked her why suddenly and she said it is all because of a reel by dr pal manikam so she is a diabetic so this is where this question comes up is intermittent fasting ideal for diabetic and cardiac patients can they do it correct so diabetes it, it is a little bit tricky if you are on insulin because you know remember we are playing with hormones right so we are playing with hormones and we are trying to reset the hormone over there it can be a little bit tricky if you are on insulin um but um it works it works fantastic uh, but it, you have to be on a monitored setting you know you need to have a glucose monitor you need to check and then see how this changes are affecting your own uh, uh, body so diabetes if you are on medications like metformin or any other Uh, oral diabetic medications uh, in my experience the risk of hypoglycemia the hormonal change is not that much so i have uh, seen many people reversing their diabetes just with fasting uh, method alone uh, okay. provided with other uh, dietary supplements as well and dietary uh, changes as well so for diabetes without insulin yes you can do it with insulin you have to be on a monitor setting even without insulin you enter on a monitor setting but not that intensely but if you're on insulin we usually do something called cgm continuous glucose monitoring where you attach that to your body and that will tell you exactly how long the glucose level is so uh that's the only criteria that you need some strict monitoring cardiac patients no problem at all you should definitely get it done it is uh, given the reason that you have a cardiac disease to start with is because that you did not intend mm. to do the fasting before great thank you doctor i think that clears a lot of questions around uh, this topic so i will actually move on to the audience question i think audience is uh, people in the audience are still asking questions so if anyone has any important question please continue to put in your questions in the chat box or in the q and a box we're taking up the audience question now uh, for people raising hands sorry we can't allow you to talk but we will definitely allow you to post your questions so moving on to our audience question i'm going to skip the questions that we have yes the audience q and a doctor are we ready to go i will ask the most relevant questions yes okay so going to our first question give me a second doctor i'm just trying to Okay first question is very important Dr Pal when are you coming to Bangalore <laughs> I think I was just there I did a medcom show over there in uh, um I don't remember the street oh in 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 uh, commercial street I did oh, that I'll okay. come back again thank you thank you very much so so Mr PV I think you uh, you missed Dr Pal's show so please wait until he comes back again which might be very soon so moving on to our next question mrs shalini i have sibo condition can i do intermittent fasting is there a cure for sibo um sibo stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth remember i we talked about that good gut bacteria bad gut bacteria so that is what is happening you know your bad gut bacteria is more than the mm. good gut bacteria so that's why we call as bacterial overgrowth so bo stands for that sa stands for small intestine so the mm. treatment for that is you just have to completely reverse it right your okay. good has to go up bad has to come down and if you follow your hormonal cycle similar to whatever the tips that we discussed this happens slowly over the span of 5 to 10 years it's going to take some time uh but uh, fasting will definitely help so sure. and why is miss, this is from mr sumit why is it said that uh, having a single banana leads to constipation so better to have two bananas abhi yeah, i i don't know who said that i really don't know here ko theri hai so i am not sure the, who said that too <laughs> i don't know the answer uh it be good single banana let you can do but perfect maybe we can uh, we, we don't have to divorce that then <laughs> maybe we'll need a separate reel for this doctor <laughs> right <laughs> yes 
ओके सो द सेम मिस असुमित इज आर सेकंड ईयर कंज्यूम मामला एंड हरद ऑन एन एम्प्टी स्टमक एंड समटाइम्स इट हेल्प्स समटाइम्स इट डसंट टू हेल्प टू क्लीन द बबल व्हाट एल्स कैन आई डू uh see the main reason for constipation is that you know two one is you don't have enough water in your colon so we usually say you, know, you need to drink a lot of water at least you know 2 to 3 liters per day number mm-hmm. one number two is you don't have enough fiber in your body and then fiber at least 25 grams of fiber per day at least minimum okay so consuming amla consuming harad every morning doesn't matter empty stomach full stomach or even you put your amla in your friend's stomach doesn't matter <laughs> it's not going to clean your bowel until the fiber is very high so you so, have to look it as a whole you cannot just look at amla alone so what were you eating at the breakfast lunch dinner together if your fiber is 25 grams per day then it will help um sure. so yeah that's what i would say Okay so we've got a couple of people who put in their phone numbers um we will definitely ask Paul to share it in 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 one of his reels so yes uh then we've got a question by Mr Harish what is the right method of exercise like walking and what is the limit or duration for someone above 60 and with diabetes um so everybody has to work out 150 minutes a week which is okay. two and a half hours a week so that could be like one whole day you just get it done on a single day it's totally okay or you split 30 minutes five days or one hour here and there it doesn't matter it has to be one to 10 minutes per week so it could be walking it could be running it could be jogging it could be strength training yoga whatever it is you would need to move your body 2 and 1/2 hours a week it is a given um and when you are moving you just need to be a little bit faster and mm-hmm. uh, making sure that you exert your heart at least a little bit So two and a half hours. It's like a movie. There can be intervals, mm-hmm. but interval alone should not be the movie. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to our next question. Uh, if we start eating at six a.m. and stop by three p.m., is it okay? Yes, absolutely. If you could do that, it's absolutely amazing. I'm I'm surprised that you're able to do that. Uh, Great. But if you can do it, it's I'm very impressed. But make sure that your protein content is high. Okay so moving on to our next question which is actually related to the last one um so people have asked about sources of proteins especially for vegetarians it's it's difficult it's uh, i understand your pain uh, but you need to put some effort into it and then you understand okay so channa has this much amount of thing rajma has this much amount of protein paneer tofu uh, you know sprouted moong dal sprouted grains So there are sources. It is not like it is. There are uh, there are no sources. There are sources, but you need to put some effort, and you need to put a uh, little bit of pre-planning as well, so that you get the uh, final amount. So, for example, you need 60 grams of uh, protein per day. For a vegetarian to get a 60 grams of protein, you better get at least 20 grams of protein on each and every meal, and you need to plan accordingly. Hopefully, if you drink milk, egg, and something, then uh, that will add uh, some more protein. In okay. So we have another question um does drinking hot water help in reducing weight Hot water no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no it, does. <laughs> it does because you know you drink hot water sometimes you don't feel hungry and that will extend your fasting window so that will help Sure So uh not when you go into the bathtub filled with hot water thinking that mm-hmm. hot water will melt the belly fat <laughs> That will not work <laughs> Thank you doctor moving on to our next question by Mrs Vijayalakshmi what would be an ideal morning meal is it okay to have palya sadam during meals along with veggie and protein Yes you know the leftover fermented rice is an absolutely wonderful thing for your good gut bacteria so pay patients who ask for the sibo i would highly recommend to search for leftover rice recipe uh, which is absolutely uh, mind blowing um okay. yes absolutely okay to include the palaya sori anytime but okay. uh, limited quantities because you know that has a lot of carbs again that will comes under to that carbohydrate number that we talked about so um again not doing anything beyond what is normal is also uh, helpful sure and there's someone who's asked how to get rid of bad bacteria same thing palaya sori palaya sori <laughs> okay 
so there is one more person mr anand uh, he's been doing intermittent fasting for 13 hours and still not able to reduce weight so he's asking what could be wrong and he's a big so, fan of yours by the way 13 hours yes for how many days i'm not Maybe sure he's four. not mentioned Yeah. He must have said one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day that enough is going to work. So, anyways, so the other thing is, so when I start, when I say this time restricted feeding, um, this will stop uh, your results one point of time because there will be a plateau because your body will get used to. It. So you need to change. You need to give it a shock. You need to change it. You need to bring it to like eight hours, ten hours, twelve hours. You need to play it around. But when you start with twelve hours and you are not seeing any change in weight three or four months, then which means that your body needs more. so you might have to cut down a little bit even more so uh, it is exactly directly proportional to the amount of damage that you did in the past mm. okay so Great. it is based, so everybody is different it cannot be generalized sure sure doctor and this is from mr shrinivasan rice or wheat chapati which is better for diabetes i would say chapati because okay. rice has a lot of carb but again the quantity has matters as well so you know my uh, patient or i guess i mean he drink he eats five chapatis <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, every five seconds. That's the problem. Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> for that, for that, so what I do is I love white rice. I absolutely mm. love white rice with sambar. White rice with sambar with uh, veggie is like my go-to. Okay. So okay. what I do is I don't uh, uh, because roti is better than rice in terms of the carbohydrate index. I don't take roti because I don't like roti. So if I do something which I don't like, I know that it is not going to be sustainable. So I'm not enjoying mm-hmm. the process. So I okay. eat white rice, okay. But I make a compromise that I'm going to eat it at a moderation. I need to go into very low quantity. So I get sure. the satisfaction that okay, I had white rice and uh, I'm good. I'm not starving out myself. So you just need to play around with your body and with your uh, uh, mindset regarding what makes you satisfied. Sure. We're running out of time. I think we are already beyond. So I'm just going to take up a few more questions and then call it a day. Um, so there is someone who has asked, uh, "Will cold pressed oil in cooking help in reducing cholesterol and blood pressure?" Um, you know, it might help. It might help. So the other thing, other takeaway I will give that to all my audience here is that you know, don't make it too complicated. Okay. So uh, cold pressed oil, aloe vera, avocado. uh this turmeric tablets uh drinking uh, water fasting for 7 days um don't make it very complicated just keep it very simple okay just keep it very simple you just follow your circadian rhythm follow the sleep pattern follow the eating pattern and in, during your eating window make sure your protein content is high your carbohydrate content is not that but you'll be okay only when you go beyond this you know like but all this influences maybe including me <laughs> they go uh target all these cold press oil and all these things mm-hmm. which is like very catchy right so then people get uh caught in this web of information regarding okay so really cold press oil is the one that is really going to help you in terms of blood pressure that is not true that is absolutely okay. not yeah so it is a overall a birds eye picture rather than an individualized item so that is sure. why i keep promoting lifestyle changes and not individual dietary changes so always when you say look at my uh my uh, reels what i do is i say eat this and don't eat this right so okay. just because i'm saying don't eat this nobody is going to stop eating barota stop eating pizza nothing other but next time when they eat the second barota they will at least have an idea that okay you know my face will come on the barota <laughs> so okay, oh my god i got what to see so it is just an overall picture okay i'm cutting down on bad food i'm promoting the good food that's it if you go into the details of cold press oil details of the ingredient you will get confused okay okay so there's one question from uh, mr shrinivas is nafld grade 2 curable is there a permanent cure for it Yes, it's permanently curable, and uh, the only thing you need to make sure that your belly fat is correlated with your fatty liver. So your goal is, uh, Srinivas, you go home next day tomorrow morning, uh, you wake up and then measure around your belly button and then check yourself whether you have belly fat or not. If you have, when you don't have the belly fat, fat in the liver will be gone, and then you know what to do to decrease the belly fat. Okay, and there's one question from Mr. Naveen: What is the right time to have fermented rice? Doesn't matter. doesn't matter better at lunch better at lunch because your insulin quality is like so good so better at lunch sure and we have a question i think 
I'll probably close with this. Is there any way to wash out uric acid? So uh, you know when you do fasting again because of the hormonal balance, um, the uric acid is formed because of hormonal imbalances, right? So when you are bringing it back to hormonal balance, slowly uric acid will be flushed out as well, so that you don't have to have excessive uric acid. So uh, I would say again aligning to all the steps that we discussed, and this problem will be gone as well. Sure. I think that's it. I'm just going to close because there are a lot of repeated questions and a lot of uh, questions related to medication and dietary advice. I would suggest you to meet your doctor uh, because this webinar is more for a generalized course. So yes, we are closing the session. Thank you so much for everyone who's asked questions. We have now come to the end of our amazing webinar. I would like to take the opportunity to thank our dear Dr. Pal for taking out time on a Friday night to participate in this informative webinar and imparting knowledge on diet, nutrition, intermittent fasting, time restricted uh, eating and much more to all of us. It was a pleasure to have you on board and it was indeed a memorable session for each one of us. I would also like to thank each one of you the attendees who have joined from all over the world and asking questions i'm sure the webinar was useful to you and dr pal's words of wisdom have encouraged you to adapt to a healthier lifestyle remember that every day we live and every meal we take we influence the great microbial organ inside us for better or for worse so choose your meals and meal timings wisely and keep your gut healthy and, and dr pal happy Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Until next time, this is Dr. Diana signing off. We will meet Dr. Pal's Pal in one of his other reels. Thank you Perfect. so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Pal. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye. Bye.